about futuristic nano electronic material and devices and what are the opportunities and uh, subsequently what are the challenges so these two topics will cover uh, and uh, if you have any doubt or any query you can drop a mail uh, this is my mail address and uh, uh, definitely you'll get a reply and uh, this is my personal website if you have any interest on my talk you can visit and uh, uh, you can find all the topics all the research area and my students whatever we are doing fine and uh, before starting to the technical session uh, let me just thank or acknowledge my students so i have a very a small group and uh, with having uh, three four phd scholars and uh, some of the masters and dual degree students and uh, uh, and some of them have graduated from my group and joined in various uh, international institutes, national institutes of Singapore, NUS, and uh, USA, and some of them are in Intel, NXP. So all these uh, students. So whatever today I am going to present, it is all about their work. So it is uh, uh, imperative to acknowledge them. And uh, and uh, in my group, we used to do all uh, kind of uh, emerging devices, whatever is covered in this HTTP in this five days. Uh, coming to FinFET, SOIE, and uh, Graphene, NCFET, and uh, we will talk about BioFET, biosensors also. And uh, similarly, uh, something uh, towards neuromorphic devices. Just now, I think Dr. Subham has completed Subham Sayak from IIT Kanpur. I think he has uh, finished his talk on neuromorphic uh, network. So I'll talk about a little bit on neuromorphic devices, uh, how a single device can be perform as a single uh, or an NIF uh, neuron kind of thing. So instead of going for a big circuit network, we can use a single device as a neuron or synapse. That also I'll cover a little bit. And uh, solar cell, I won't cover this talk. And uh, only I'll talk about NC a little bit, graphene effect, how graphene can be used for a transistor, and uh, a little bit about neuromorphism. So these three topics I'll try to cover because of time limitation and as i have only one hour and 15 minutes something so i'll try to cover all these three things and the flow will go uh, like this so first of all i will try to cover a little bit about uh, what is nano electronics anyhow uh, most of the talk is having this part but i'll brief about this uh, with a uh, brief note what is scaling what is the benefits and uh, uh, what are the challenges also because uh, everything we cannot get uh, profit or all pros we have to pay for that and what are the payment is challenges and uh, how to mitigate those challenges that is uh, some of the feasible solutions and then further i'll talk about what are the emerging devices for future integrated circuits little bit uh, with briefly i'll cover this part then i'll focus about our uh, research activity whatever we are doing in my group and uh, if you talk about uh, uh, the modeling of 2D semiconductor, that is uh, modeling of graphene fit, and uh, then a little bit on uh, uh, negative capacitance, why negative capacitance has become so much popular, and uh, what is the use of it, uh, how to overcome the Boltzmann tyranny. So all these things, uh, all these things I'll cover here in NC fit negative capacitance fit. And uh, similarly, uh, the final part of my talk will cover on FinFET as a single device, how to build it. Uh, as a uh, neuron fine so these three topics i'll try to cover today and some of the open areas or emerging areas also i'll show this is not uh, exhaustively just a little bit areas like neuromorphic computing is today emerging and uh, many applications similarly power devices if you talk about the high power and uh, um, high voltage application devices uh, mostly for electrical uh, circuits or electrical networks and there uh, we have a lot of materials like gallium nitride, silicon carbide, and uh, similarly, uh, beta gallium oxides. Nowadays, it is much popular ga 2 or 3 So all these materials, little bit, I'll talk. Then finally, uh, which is uh, nano sheet and nano ribbon fit. Uh, this is just announced by nano sheet by Samsung and uh, nano ribbon by, I think, Intel. So they are just uh, uh, proposing by 2024, they are going to use nano sheet or ribbon fit. And uh, now uh, the era is going towards unstrung technology, not towards nanometer. So nanometer is going to over and uh, it will go to Armstrong era. So I'll show a little bit uh, why scaling. A uh, lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, things are going on throughout the world uh, because if you scale down the device, 
then we can achieve a lot of functionality. First thing is uh, functionality, and second part is our uh, uh, cost. Okay, so these uh, because of these two parts, then we are uh, day by day tremendously we are going for scaling. So if uh, once we'll scale down the device, then obviously the capacitance is going to decrease, and uh, the capacitance will further reduce the delay. Uh, tau and uh, which is our basic requirement because day by day we need high speed so the speed will increase by 30 uh, percent if you say one technology to another technology and which is the uh, most important part for any transmission uh, transmission or any rf communication kind of thing right so uh, basically uh, what is our uh, part to improve the performance and to integrate more function that's what i told so functionality and cost if you can achieve all these things only possible due to the scaling of devices or you can say small is desirable right so normally scaling down the device will give you a high speed low power and high packet density and uh, as i already mentioned uh, if you go from one uh, meter to micrometer technology to nanometer technology now uh, suddenly intel is coming with armstrong so um, by 2024, they are saying 20 Armstrong technology will come because after three nanometer, instead of going to two nanometer, they are calling it as 20 Armstrong. So now Armstrong era has uh, came and I'll show you the news. Okay, so uh, two parts of uh, uh, things. One is uh, Moore's law. It is much, uh, I think it is much more familiar and uh, most of you uh, might have come across Moore's law. And uh, apart from Moore's law, there are two advancements. One is more Moore and another one is MPM, more than Moore. So what is more Moore means? Uh, uh, in, it is only focused about continued shrinking, okay? Only, without focusing any logic or any memory storage, it is only talking about the continuous shrinkage. And uh, if you talk about more than Moore, so which is a functionality diversification. So how to get all components like DC, analog, RF, all the components into a single chip. That is nothing but your SIP or SOC, system on chip and a system in package, so everything. So this is uh, focused on more than more and uh, MTM technology. And if you see this one, one uh, trained uh, from TSMC, I have taken from TSMC 7 nanometer process, which is saying how the number of transistors is keep on increasing uh, year by year, if you see 1975 to so this projection is up to 2015, and uh, where we achieved uh, about 7 nanometer technology. So the number of transistors is keep on increasing in this y axis, and whereas this year is in x axis, right? So fine. Now, uh, coming to uh, Jordan Murray, this is a repetition of previous slide. So, whatever I told, uh, I think this is about beyond CMOS and this is about. Uh, uh, functionality diversification. So if you see this x-axis, which is talking about more than Mure or MTM, popularly known as MTM technology. And this is about more Mure, which is continuous uh, shrinkage. Okay. So these two things, and if you see functionality diversification, all components like analog, RF, passive, active components, high voltage power components, sensor, actuators, uh, bio chips, everything can be integrated into a single chip. That's what uh, uh, this MTM is talking about. And uh, similarly, uh, this 0.7, if you see, this is a very good number. And uh, why? Because uh, every technology, new technology is coming with a 50% uh, of reduction uh, from previous tech. And 50% uh, how it is coming? Due to this 0.7 into previous width and 0.7 into previous height, then we can achieve a 0.49, which is nothing but 50% of previous uh, area. Right? So just quickly, I'll finish all this uh, stuff so that we can go to our work. And finally, this is just a technology roadmap from IRDS, what is International Roadmap for Semiconductors. And uh, uh, that uh, this prediction says uh, by 2021, uh, already FinFET has been introduced in the uh, foundry node, which is i7, F5. Uh, see, this, don't confuse with the foundry node uh, with the processor. There is nothing i7 or i5. This is just a scaling factor, i7. And uh, 2022, it's coming i5, then 25, i3. So how these uh, uh, things are going in advanced way from 21 to 34 years, it is going. And uh, the similarly, the devices. The devices, FinFed, then uh, uh, get all around, then coming to 3D architecture or vertical, now further, nano or 31 fed 
okay this is just a prediction and uh, finally if you see here in 20 uh, 28 kind of thing here there is a prediction of replacing silicon by uh, either 2d devices whatever today i'll focus on graphene fit one of the 2d device there are a lot of 2d material if you talk about molybdenum disulfide if you talk about tungsten disulfide then similarly um, all uh, all i think graphene is there moh2 is there wac2 is there uh, so all uh, different 2d materials are there so there is a chance to replace silicon uh, in the year of 2028 and similarly fe fit so ferroelectric fit whatever today i'll speak a little bit about uh, that is mc fit negative capacitance fit so how to get uh, steep ss or steep sub threshold slope in um, in your id vg characteristic that also i'll cover today a little bit on mc fit and uh, this graphene fit and uh, uh, for uh, further it will uh, carry the technology towards 2031 then uh, again further it will go same way 2d device and fe fit all these two devices will uh, carry the technology from 2028 onwards this prediction says okay finally finally this new technology every uh, two year we are getting because uh, 21 22 here 25 and uh, area reduction as i have shown already 50 percent and uh, scaling for uh, you can say cost then speed all power and the uh, channel length reduction is a 30 percent okay now uh moving forward uh moving forward this is just a news from intel uh, roadmap so how they have started with silicon germanium for stress or strain technology then coming to 65 45 32 then finally 2014 it is finfet and still it is going on finfet uh maybe uh, next year or 2023 get all around will take over on finfet we don't know so we have to wait till the font re announced now uh, there is a debate uh, what next 5 nanometer or 3 nanometer already 3 nanometer has been released and uh, uh, there is a mass production on 3 nanometer now next uh, uh, it's the topic of talk which is by 2024 it's 20 amps fine uh, now the same uh, from tsmc one of the news uh, what last, last year tsmc has started uh, 5 nanometer process node with uh, this uh, i think apple has been adopted in their iphone 12 series which iphone 12 series has been taken this a14 bionic chip and this a14 bionic chip is nothing but built by 5 nanometer process uh, finfets and similarly the 3 nanometer uh, was a talk uh, now i think it is going to be released 3 nanometer process node and uh, by second half of 2022 and uh, then again 3 nanometer process node will provide 15 percent speed if you see the speed increment or improvement in speed it is by 15 percent and the power uh, decrement is by 30 percent as compared to the 5 nanometer process now uh, yeah this was uh, this was the talk 2 nanometer or um, tsmc and samsung released 2 nanometer next but uh, intel came with 20 armstrong the similar thing only but uh, the name itself they changed to uh, nanometer to armstrong and uh, uh, they are focusing on nano sheet nano sheet transistor whereas uh, intel's focus is on ribbon uh, kind of thing nano ribbon or it is popularly uh, mentioned as ribbon fit. Fine. And if you are much more interested, you can find the news from Intel or Samsung anywhere. Yeah, this is the uh, thing, whatever I told, uh, because Intel has shown uh, you 10 nanometer, then Intel 7, then it is 4, then 3. Now, finally, they are proposing with a 20 Armstrong. Okay. And this is all about uh, ribbon fit. Intel's ribbon fit was one of transistor gate all around. If you see this, uh, this gate is uh, completely surrounded to the channel, so that much more control and uh, having. But we have to uh, find the peaks between the uh, this all uh, gate all around uh, things. So what is the distance between these two peaks? Okay, and uh, if you see 20 Armstrong, they are saying uh, breakthrough innovation by 2024 and uh, similarly ribbon fit is the new transistor architecture and uh, the power via is interconnect uh, interconnect they have to innovate how to do the interconnects and uh, all these performance metrics are there how improvement they did from seven to four from four to three so all these things are 
given over here. I'm not going in detail because it's a simple uh, stops, how they have in, improved the uh, performance, how they've reduced the power, all these things. And already uh, Apple picked the company to build M1 processor and uh, which is replacing Intel chips by Nvidia or Qualcomm or AMD, all these rivals are there of Intel. And the same uh, same diagram, uh, how it went from 90 nanometer to 65 to 45 uh, up to 20 Armstrong. Okay, uh, now coming to Samsung, similar way Samsung has also released MBC FET or a nano chip, whatever I told, just a multi bridge channel FET or it is just a same kind of stacking uh, in this way. Instead of uh, this nano wear, they made a stack kind of thing so that uh, much more carrier transport mechanism will happen and uh, mobility can be enhanced so all these controls also increase all these things can be achievable through nano seat transistor fine now coming to india scenario if you uh, might have uh, seen in the news or somewhere just now india has released india semiconductor mission this is just for your kind information so in india semiconductor mission if you can find uh, from Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology Government of India. You can go to this website and see what is the semiconductor mission. They, uh, there is a plan of investment, uh, I think $10 billion or approximately 76,000 crores of rupees uh, towards the semiconductor industry of India, how to develop. And uh, if you see here, they almost cover everything starting from 65 nanometer technology uh, and uh, uh, with the analog and by stream of how much dollar to invest and similarly for packaging how much dollar and uh, all the discrete power and rf devices uh, coming to gallium nitride silicon power devices silicon carbide how much billion dollar and starting to fab to integrate to package to marketing everything uh, they have taken care uh, in the indian semiconductor mission and uh, here uh, 28 nanometer also it will be there advanced team of devices even sensors and uh, a biosensor or any kind of sensors and uh, how to uh, design a flexible electronics or wearable devices that also have been, has been taken care of. and finally the solar or photovoltaics okay so all these things uh, india is moving forward uh, to uh, become a become a popular choice for semiconductor industry fine but all these improvements whatever i told this is all about pros only or advancements or what is the benefit or what we can achieve to everything but uh, uh, you cannot get everything without paying something and this is the challenge uh, the, all the challenges is coming what is the scaling challenges and if you see some of them i have listed over here so what is the listing here yeah, source and drain channel electrostatic coupling because day by day we are the distance between source and drain is coming closer and closer so uh, this depletion weights will have, will play a major role uh, because effective channel length will uh, go down then all the effects like short channel effects drain induced barrier lowering then clm channel length modulation then gate leakage so all the things will uh, come to picture if you are proposing any new device you have to model it properly by considering all the effects because electric field is a major bottleneck if you think about small uh, area or small channel length mm. And uh, similarly, mobility reduction because of scattering mechanism, there are a lot of scattering will happen because mean free time uh, or mean free path will reduce, free time will be reduced, then scattering will enhance. And the velocity saturation, then a uh, lot of parasitic effects due to the uh, parasitic capacitances and parasitic resistances and many things. And finally, this one, this one which is for an ideal mod, the subthreshold slope or subthreshold swing which we are talking about if you plot in a logarithmic scale so if you plot in log, log scale this slope is much more important how steep this slope is because this slope will define this leakage current what is the i of and this is occurring in the subthreshold region below threshold region so you have to particularly meticulously calculate what is the uh, slope of the uh, log it and vg right and uh, for that many devices has come to picture one of them is tunnel fit but tunnel fit is unfortunately no one is adopting or uh, from the industry side from the foundry side but uh, again one more uh, device came which is negative capacitance fit so how negative capacitance can give you steep slope that also today i'll give you a little bit idea 
now coming to all the issues uh, this i am not i'll not go through because these are just uh, book stops you can find all everything in in the book any kind of textbook or anywhere and uh, shifting of threshold voltage will happen if you scale down then di bell which is drain induced barrier loading that means drain is going to take over the control on the channel which is not desirable and uh, again if you much more increase this drain bias then there will be a chance this two depletion weights will be merged together and that is nothing but your punch through which is called as punch through and similarly surface scattering velocity saturation and the hot electron effect uh, uh, due to high electric field and this is a boltzmann limit boltzmann limit which uh, which says uh, uh, the 60 millivolt per decade that is what uh, boltzmann tirani or boltzmann limit because if you find out uh, that uh, uh, expression which is id and exponential Uh, eta vgs or uh, what is kt by q things are there if you just solve it then you can find for 60 millivolt of change vgs uh, we have a 10 fold or 10 uh, fold change of current and that is what uh, it is boltzmann tirani popularly known as boltzmann tirani which is 60 millivolt per decade for an ideal mos ideal silicon based mos so how to overcome this because this slope only can give you a uh, pretty good uh, leakage current or very very low leakage current fine now uh, in a summary uh, in a summary you can find all these consequences of scaling so what are the consequences you can have there is junction leakage in i1 there is a direct uh, leakage of i2 sub threshold leakage and uh, there is a uh, i6 which is uh, your uh, punch through once these two regions will overlap then there is a communication between source and drain without giving any gate bias so that is i6 so all these leakage currents total i have marked as uh, six leakage currents i1 to i6 so all these leakage currents are coming to picture once you scale down the device to a certain extent so uh, one popular quote let me uh, quote uh, from professor tenning who so what is his quote his quote is small is beautiful because we are getting lot of improvements in device performance many uh, performances also and cost also reduced many things we are achieving due to the small or due to the scaling of device but in consequence we are getting off is not totally off why because these many leakage currents due to these many leakage currents we can say off is not totally off even if you are not applying any gate bias the device is in stand alone or off state Still, you are experiencing some kind of leakage currents, which is not at all desirable. So these two quotes are uh, very famous. You can say one is small is beautiful, another one is off is not totally off. Now coming to our work, and uh, if you see in our group, whatever we are doing, we are doing a lot of things uh, uh, covering this advanced devices, SOI devices, uh, 3D fin fed. But I'll not cover in this talk SOI or 3D. i'll focus on this graphene part graphene fit here in 2d materials then i'll little bit focused on nc and neuromorphic but uh, these are the possible solutions you might have seen tunnel fit in this uh, workshop there are uh, some talks on tunnel fit there are some talks in uh, 2d also there are some talks on dft density function theory uh, towards the material perspective so lot of things covered uh, thanks to dr subham and uh, dr ajayan for inviting all the eminent speakers covering many areas okay now i'll start with uh, uh, this part briefly then i'll go to graphene so here uh, sy uh, sy is uh, there are again two kind of thing depending on uh, pd and uh, depending on fd so what is uh, partially depleted sy what is fully depleted sy and uh, uh, what is advancement here here some uh, floating body effect will be there because the body is not fully depleted once if you uh, once if you apply some vg then there may be some depletion region then uh, suddenly there may be some inversion region due to the bounded charges due to the free charges so you will get some qb dash you will get some qy dash so once qy dash has been formed then you can say your channel has been inverted from p to n type and you can get a channel from source to drain so that is happening in the normal transistor also but the problem here is we are just giving one buried oxide which is sandwiched between the body and substrate and here also you can see uh, the same oxide has been sandwiched between body and substrate but the only difference is q 
here the body thickness is little high whereas the body thickness is little low here and it is called fully depleted the complete channel has been depleted whereas here the complete channel has not been depleted your partial channel is depleted and some part is there for floating body and i'll show you how this pdsy is uh, uh, beneficial in case of neuromorphism towards the end of the talk okay so these are uh, two devices um, who replaced bulk cmos why because there are no path for leakage towards the body so we can restrict uh, some of the leakage currents here also and here also but again uh, the demerit is there are a lot of uh, self fitting effects i don't know whoever covered self fitting effects but you will find lot of heating because of a uh, carrier transport mechanism there is no path towards body so carriers will be concentrated over here and they may generate some heat that is what self heating effect is much more important in case of any fdsy okay so now the journey has started from bulk uh, then uh, multi gate devices double then uh, what is the fin fed technology how multiple fins are given with fin peak hmm. and uh, all this advance uh, advancements is possible either you can go with new materials if some material engineer is there then they can find some new new materials which can support uh, in the conductor industry and you can find some novel architecture or structural so these two are the pathways how to uh, mitigate all the challenges fine now uh, this is just i have taken from eds newsletter eds means electron device society i tell clean newsletter and uh, here uh, they are proposing finfet is already uh, taken lot of pain and uh, many devices has been uh, built with fin fin based devices but now they are planning to replace finfet with gate all around because gate all around is having complete coverage and uh, having all around and the control is pretty high as compared to the fin technology okay so this is the old stuff again uh, finfet has ad adopted by all the companies if you see oneplus 3 and uh, uh, samsung uh, exynos and uh, what is xiaomi redmi popular phone uh, okay they have started using uh, almost uh, 14 nanometer in the way back 2015 or 16 somewhere uh, but nowadays there is oneplus 5g came and uh, uh, not uh, even 3g 4g over and 5g came so still finfets are going on with little bit uh, lower technology and some improvements okay moving forward uh, so i'll little bit focus about what is our task what we did graphene fit and why graphene why particularly we have chosen graphene uh, if you go back to 2004 so these are the two scientists uh, even andre jim and uh, uh, novoselov in novoselov they have just first invented graphene and uh, they have exploited uh, graphene uh, from the graphite and uh, uh, for that work they possible got nobel prize in uh, 2010 okay so both of them has got and uh, there is a museum you can find the uh, um, first uh, graphene how graphene transistor has been uh, came and uh, this is donated to the nobel museum it is there in the museum uh, anyone can visit and see fine and uh, why this uh, material has become that much popular uh, due to all the properties if you see the graphene properties and uh, graphene properties young modulus is fine now this is the important factor mobility because anyhow our need is uh, the mobility should be very high and the drain current so that we can get a good uh, drain current okay so mobility if you see this is almost 2 lakh cm square per volt second which is 100 times higher than silicon so that motivates many of the researchers to uh, take graphene in transistor uh, but i'll show you what is the demerit also because uh, there is one demerit so what is its demerit if you see this energy and momentum diagram ek diagram so uh, ek diagram you can find there is a point where this conduction band and valence band is uh, merged or meet together right so this point is nothing but your beginning zone and it is that is why it is called as zero band gap semiconductor so uh, some point there is no gap and it is called as zero band gap semiconductor because both the conduction band and valence band are merging at a single point and i have shown you uh, uh, one of the um, graphene sheet so there are uh, 
two sub lattices so one sub lattice you can find from a here in the triangle set another sub lattice you can find b okay this triangle set so what is the beauty of these two if you have uh, one sub lattice you can build the complete sheet that is what the beauty and uh, either you can take a sub lattice or you can take b sub lattice that is why i have shown you in two colors two different colors so one is blue one is this brown color okay and uh, uh, what is the difference between ek relationship of normal uh, silicon based semiconductor or any normal semiconductor uh, because this is mm, you might have seen all ek diagram so in the semiconductor this is a kind of parabola set right this is the kind of parabola set and uh, this minimum and maxima is uh, apart because it is not a direct angular semiconductor and uh, uh, if you see the graphene this is not in parallel parabola this is kind of uh, linear dispersion okay so there is a linear dispersion uh, nature or in ek diagram and uh, this point where all ea formulable conduction band valence band are merging together and with a band gap of zero so the problem here is uh, even if you are getting uh, very good uh, very good uh, uh, mobility even if you can get very good uh, uh, drain current but the problem is it is very difficult to make the transistor off make the transistor off because of zero band gap so very difficult to make the transistor off uh, then we people found how to uh, change the or how to alter the properties so that it can be useful in transistor cases so how to alter the properties when some people has uh, shown how to shift this direct point so this is called uh, direct point and how to shift this direct point either towards up or towards down that is uh, by changing the properties or by altering the properties and some also found uh, how to induce any band gap even though this is not uh, uh, experimentally uh, still now established but some theoretical or dft analysis is there how to induce some band gap so that it can be very useful in uh, transistor cases okay i'll show you some uh, examples so here it is called zero band gap in graphene is one of the common hinder or common bot bottleneck for the use of uh, fet or for the use of transistors now there are different methodology how can we create uh, or how can we create induce band gap or how can we shift the direct point so this is some of the methods one is cutting larger area of graphene into a uh, sheet so which is called graphene nano ribbons or gnr and another one is if you compress it uh, then there may be some uh, property change and it can give you some of the uh, gaps or something and uh, similarly if you apply very high electric field to perpendicular to the sheet then also it will alter the property and finally if you can able to dope uh, the graphene using substitutional doping using substitutional doping not in the interstitial uh, kind of thing so substitutional doping means one uh, host atom will be replaced by the dopant atom okay suppose it is a host atom graphene or carbon atom and the carbon atom has been replaced by any kind of a dopant atom either it is boron or nitrogen or any kind of thing exactly uh, substituting one a host atom and uh, this method also pretty much popular because many dft analysis has been occurred how to change one carbon atom and uh, what is the property change uh, whether it can induce some gap or not so all these things fine now uh, from literature we found uh, uh, this is the thing if you see here uh, for two cases one is nitrogen dope another one is boron dope and two cases if you can able to dope with a 6.25% so what does it mean percentage in doping means if you can replace one uh, dopant atom with suppose there are 50 host atoms let's say example 50 host atoms and out of this 50 host atoms means carbon atom so out of this 50 host atom we are replacing one atom with with either nitrogen or boron dopant atom so that means 1 over 50 it is kind of uh, 2% right so similarly this 6.25% has been calculated 12.5 uh, all this dft analysis and uh, 18.75 25% and by observing these analysis if you replace 
uh, this much of atom, then there is a band gap of 0.36 electron volt. There is a band gap of 0.62, and finally you can achieve a band gap of 1.149 with a doping percentage of 25%. So this is everything is taken from literature. And similarly, if you can able to uh, dope properly with a nitrogen or with a boron, then this direct points, whatever we talked about, direct points are uh, merging. Everything is here, EF, EC, EV. Now there is a shifting of this direct point towards down or towards up, depending on nitrogen or boron. Again, one more important thing is they are inducing some gap. They are inducing some gap depending on the doping percentage. So these are the uh, band gaps I have shown you and how these direct points are shifting either downward if it is nitrogen or N type case if it is boron I will say it is going topward okay or going upward. Fine <clears throat> now what is uh, our task suppose we have taken a backgated graphene fit and uh, this is my graphene sheet. So this is my graphene sheet I have taken and I am replacing silicon. Then it is uh, it is imperative to model the device properly because see this is not a three dimensional material. This is a two dimensional material and uh, which is having only two dimension, not three dimension. Again, if you are doping also, there is not per centimeter cube. It is it will come as per centimeter square because it's x and y. No z is there. So. Uh, the mobility, the property, everything is changing. So what is our task? We have to model it properly. First uh, thing is we have to find out what is drain current model so that it can be useful uh, in the circuit application. And uh, for finding drain current, this is combination of drip and diffusion. So both the components are there, and drip as well as uh, diffusion components. So uh, here if you see, uh, two parts are there. Uh, one is rho SS. Okay, and the rho SS will further give you seed charge QSH. Mm. Another thing is mobility. Inside this VD, mobility is there. So here mobility mu and uh, mu. So two things. First part is carrier statistics. <coughs> carrier uh, statistics. And second part is uh, carrier transport. So this way we have to model it properly. So in carrier statistics, we can find it out uh, what is rho SH, uh, seed charge density, then what is seed charge because we have taken a seat over here and uh, then seed charge will come from how many carriers are available or carrier concentration P and N and this P and N will come from density of states. Okay, so density of, and from where we will get density of states, DOS will come from energy and momentum relationship. Okay, so this is all about your carrier study. Now another part is carrier transport. So how these carriers are transporting from source to drain. So from here we have to find out mobility, right? And uh, to get mobility, we need uh, conductivity, right? And similarly, uh, without scattering, because scattering mechanism has to be incorporated here because they have to move from source to drain, either whether they are scattering with or colliding with each other, or there is any without any collision, they are uh, traveling from here to there. So that scattering parameter will be found from tau, which is your uh, mean free time or you can say transit time, whatever, tau. And again, uh, this tau can be modeled through, uh, which is called as scattering uh, parameters. That is nothing but interaction parameters. This is popularly known as interaction parameters, right, RS. So we started modeling uh, the device uh, through this carrier statistics, through this carrier transport. And uh, first our target is how to find out uh, QSH uh, from this carrier statistics. And second is how to find out this mobility from carrier transport, okay? And uh, finally, we can build the trend current. This is what the uh, complete thing. So let us start with carrier statistics. I'll briefly tell you because inside, uh, if you go, there are long, long mathematical expressions. So rho SH and inside rho SH we have QSH and uh, if you see this relationship one is EK, uh, first one is undoped case and uh, second one is doped. Once you are doping with some percentage as I already mentioned you percentage what is percentage of doping. So if you are doping then 
how the relationships are changing right and uh, uh, already it is mentioned direct points has been shifting and with a induced band gap everything so e minus ec is coming as uh, this little bit mathematical things are there so let me avoid all the mathematics for the time being uh, only thing is we need to find out carrier statistics or qss through this density of states fine now uh, moving forward here uh, for two cases one is nitrogen and similarly for boron case now nitrogen case if you see here we are getting qss through this uh, all this kind of modeling because eta fc is there and uh, one more thing uh, just to observe qss is dependent on eta fc from this modeling qss is dependent on eta fc whereas eta fc is further dependent on ef minus edc fine ef minus edc and what is this ef minus edc ef minus edc means you can find for me and this direct point right ef minus edc so ef minus edc is again dependent on a vch vch which is the channel potential which is channel potential right so ultimately qss having dependency on vch ultimately if you see qss is having dependency on vch indirectly because qss is dependent on eta fc eta fc is dependent on ef minus edc and finally ef minus edc is nothing but q vch fine so to keep a note qss is having a uh, dependency on channel potential now let me find out what is quantum capacitance quantum capacitance is nothing but once you got qss from rho sh from rho sh we found qss once you got qss you can easily found out what is cq cq is nothing but just a partial differentiation between uh, do q charge divided by potential okay do v so here it is cq is uh, q upon v this is do q divided by do vch and we can get quantum capacitance ex expression fine now if you plot uh, similarly it can be done for boron i am not going again inside boron because one is there means just opposite here it is uh, eta fc or you can say uh, ef minus edc here it is ef minus edv nothing else it is quite uh, similar and uh, ef minus edv is again dependent on qvcs and you can find cq so both for quantum capacitance for nitrogen case and boron case just developed and once we got this uh, graphs what is quantum capacitance for on doped case this is my on doped there is no doping and uh, this is uh, 6.25 this is 12.5 and 25 now if you observe this is exactly on doped case is exactly merging at zero hmm. there is no gap the direct point is exactly at zero now if you observe these cases these cases is having uh, a little bit left shift or direct point has been shifted direct point has been shifted shifting of direct point as well as there is a inducing band gap here you can observe exactly linear dispersion hmm, there is no gap and here some gap slowly slowly is inducing from the quantum capacitance graph and similarly uh, for boron dop also you can see a right shift with having certain amount of gap fine and this uh, uh, model we have just validated and uh, uh, proposed over here in IEEE EDTM. And uh, again, coming to uh, carrier transport. So, carrier transport means we have to model properly mobility, right? Once we got QSS, uh, find carrier statistics over over. Now, our task is how to find uh, mobility. And how to find mobility means we have to uh, model this MIG. MIG means metal insulator graphene. So, kind of two terminal device. If you see two terminals, so here it is metal and here some insulator and uh, finally graphene okay kind of thing so two terminal instead of all four terminals i'm just giving you two terminal device and if you make a kvl or kitchos voltage law you can easily find out this channel potential expression fine now another thing to note earlier i have already told qsh is having dependency on vch fine and here if you see the uh, kvl equation your VCH is also dependent on QSH, fine? QSH is having a dependency on VCH and uh, other way around, VCH is also having a QSH dependency. So this says 
uh, this is just an observation which says we cannot explicitly or we cannot explicitly solve this equation it is very difficult to solve explicitly this equation explicitly means you can you cannot get because they are interdependent so you cannot get an expression uh, of uh, so having solution vcs or having solution of qss so initially we have to guess something to get another thing that's what initially we have to guess one parameter and we have to get another parameter so uh, we tried to model the device self consistent that's what so instead of uh, um, getting a explicit relation we got self consistent modeling so self consistent modeling means this approach we just followed so initial guess you can take something uh, of channel potential to find out qss okay quantum capacitance qss all the things so once it is uh, and it is very important to find this initial guess how to uh, predict this initial guess uh, basically we are just uh, assuming it should be lower than vcs so uh, qss and cq we we'll find out and all the terminology can be updated with newton raphson fast order newton raphson method fast order newton raphson method fine this is just an uh, self consistent modeling instead of having any explicit relationship between vcs and qss because they are interdependent okay once we got this self consistent uh, with this initial guess then we can find out what is oss what is id and uh, uh, all the parameters right now uh, if you see here we talk about oss over uh, from qss fine from the carrier statistics now remaining term is uh, mobility so remaining term is here in numerator mobility and in denominator it is mobility fine so now how to model mobility properly so mobility again there are two mechanisms one is ballistic so ballistic means uh, it can your carrier can travel like a bullet from source to drain ballistic transport but that will happen if your channel length is very very low in our case the channel length is little large so we focused on drift diffusion modeling okay classical modeling which is drift diffusion modeling kind of thing so mobility and uh, then conductivity will come so from conductivity we can find what is the scattering how many scattering things are happening or what is the transit mean free path or mean free time and then this interaction point so all these parents uh, again i am not going in detail the mathematics so for undoped case just to give you a brief for undoped case uh, this rs is having a constant or you can say whatever interaction parameter because uh, ef is this much and ef all the numerator and denominator can be cancelled out so that is why we are getting a constant uh, in case of undoped but coming to doping there are a lot of developments we have to model it properly what is uh, if it is less than dc because there is shifting there is shifting of direct points with inducing some gap so you have to find whether it is in uh, below this for me or uh, whether it is in uh, this region or below e ev so properly we have to model three part fine again skipping this mathematics so finally we got mobility uh, mobility is having all the relationship tau uh, rho or sigma sorry sigma and if you come to results so results one thing we observed uh, rs has been plotted over here if we are going uh, larger and larger doping then there may interaction will happen uh, large so rs is again dependent on doping so uh, again if you see transit time tau this point is on doped case so this part is on doped one and one more thing you have to observe over here uh, if you have attended the talk of tunnel fit there may be one term which is ambipolar right which is ambipolar so ambipolar means both the polarities means electron and hole both they are taking part in current conduction which should not be the case because our device is unipolar when we are talking about any mos transistor okay so how to avoid this ambipolar if you compare this undoped case undoped is giving you uh, both ambipolarity that is why it is very difficult to make the transistor off you cannot off it because both the carriers are taking part in current conduction now if you see the doped cases see the ambipolar behavior is little bit uh, uh, reduced 
okay if you increase the doping concentration ambipolar behavior is going down and down and you can get only uh, uh, one polarity pair similarly if you think about boron low so this part you can focus like n type and p type if you plot n type case so how the uh, current characteristics if, if it is a p type how the characteristics will look like so to have ambipolarity effect can be little bit avoided and similarly conductivity also you can observe so conductivity here uh, again ambipolar nature can be avoided here right and similarly boron type case here this part fine and mobility uh, obviously mobility uh, maybe for undoped case it is pretty high uh, but we don't want because we want some gap so that we can make the transistor off and this is what after doping there is little bit reduction but it is fine it is fine in case of uh, making a transistor out of mobility uh, sorry out of graphene <clears throat> okay and after modeling this again our task is whether uh, it is realistic or not so we have to validate it so all these conductivity terms has been validated for a two different doping concentration one is four percent another one is one percent so all are matching perfectly fine so this is experimental and this is modeling part and this one we just reported uh, now nmdc and similarly mobility has been validated uh, from the experimental result and coming to results so results two things we need to observe so one is uh, anyhow idvg uh, idvg will show you uh, three different vsc so three different vsc means uh, two things here is one thing is uh, what is the off state leakage first one is i off and second one is uh, i on as well as ambipolar behavior so three things we have to observe after doping the graphene in a transistor pair ambipolar behavior right and now if you see ambipolar behavior has been quite reduced this is only one sided hmm. other side is going down and similarly this red color also only one sided giving you uh, on current right and uh, similarly at zero voltage what is the offset leakage that also you can find after extraction so with a pretty good on off ratio we can observe we can reduce the ambipolar behavior we can find uh, how to make the transistor off so all these things possible now let me quickly go then second part of uh, this one is uh, again iv characteristics of substitutional doping and uh, this part is fine perfectly fine nitrogen dope we are getting uh, on state current and uh, we can minimize this off state leakage somewhat and we can reduce the ambipolar behavior also coming to idvd if you see this idvd characteristics so this linear dotted one is on doped case okay this one is on doped case and if you see uh, this is useless device there is no use it, it cannot cannot be used uh, any kind of switching application or anything because the uh, characteristics is completely linear now whatever idvd we need we need it should be good saturation so that it can be used for amplification purpose and it can give you a saturation current over here and if you see uh, all these diagrams uh, for having 6.25 12.5 18 25 everything is giving you perfect saturation right and uh, it can be useful for uh, other device application like uh, analog applica application or switching application all these things good now uh, one more talk topic is there but uh, uh, time is running out okay so uh, non linearity performance for any rf uh, performance we need all the information should be there in the fundamental frequency it should not be scattered towards the higher frequency or other uh, uh, frequencies other harmonics should not uh, take the information so whatever information is there it should be available in the fundamental then we started a, a single tone and multi tone uh, investigation of uh, uh, the device so single tone uh, means uh, one frequency suppose 10 kilohertz or any uh, thing or similarly multi tone means uh, two different frequency kind of thing okay and uh, we start, uh, try to find out what is the harmonics sd2 sd3 im2 im3 long uh, all non linearity figure of marriage and uh, similarly linearity figure of marriage what is 
uh, and uh, one more thing you should uh, remember non linearity means this should reduce and linearity means this should increase and the formulas are given over here what is harmonic distance on uh, second order what is uh, third order harmonic distance on all these things i am skipping okay so finally what we did we uh, started this uh, modeling of device with a um, equivalent circuit so after making this equivalent circuit we started writing very log a code then making a symbol and uh, after putting this symbol then we can uh, see the all these performances linearity and nonlinearity right and uh, this work we just uh, uh, published in iet cds and earlier work whatever i have shown you self consistent modeling that is uh, published in ieee transactions on electronic devices fine and uh, uh, again i am skipping this part because i have to cover a uh, little bit neuron and nc fine let me skip it now coming to uh, nc fit uh, that's all about uh, graphene fit what we did and uh, coming to nc fit so nc fit means uh, uh, because if you see this uh, log id and vz we need the slopes to be very very steep so that we can get a good leakage or if leakage to be very low but again there is a boltzmann limit so boltzmann limit says we cannot go below 60 millivolt per decade so what are the materials or what are the possible choices uh, to achieve this below 60 millivolt per decade so that's what uh, one of the possible solution is ferroelectric material <clears throat> and uh, or you can say uh, okay before going to ferroelectric material let me give you one uh, brief idea what is negative capacitance and uh, what is lk theory so lk theory means londa kalpana uh, theory which says this free energy is can be written as alpha uh, and uh, p square or polarization this is my free energy this is polarization and all this alpha beta gamma is uh, material properties and it can be written as like this with uh, uh, lk theory or nonlinear dielectric now uh, if you see over here if you just make a partial differentiation rho g with respect to rho p or with respect to polarization then rho g rho p, rho p will become as zero then you can find out what is e right you can find out easily uh, e so e is nothing but electric field and polarization we can get a relationship what is e and what is p so once we got this e and uh, p relationship we can see what is a negative capacitance because normally if you see this free energy to charge so free energy and charge relationship is u square divided by 2g now if you plot it it will give you some kind of parabola in nature some kind of parabola in nature which says it is positive capacitance if the parabola is topward now what is negative capacitance if it is inverted parabola if it is a inverted parabola kind of thing then we can say this uh, energy and charge is giving you inverted shape so it is a giving you negative capacitance okay and from which material we can get so to get this kind of score we found out the ferroelectric materials if you observe this part if you observe this part it can give you inverted parabola kind of thing right so inverted parabola having all three states to two unstable states one uh, stable state okay and this is giving you similar kind of nature and if you just make a partial differentiation of uh, do g uh, with respect to uh, do p then you can find uh, what this kind of s shape this is just a differentiation of this term you can find same three uh, points so two unstable one stable point and the important thing is this red color s curve up to here whatever red color is given so if you can uh, you can operate your device in this region of operation then then you can achieve a negative capacitance negative capacitance okay so this is what i have given you one uh, p curve which is polarization and electric field curve and this polarization and electric field curve means says we should operate the device in particularly this region what is uh, sf kind of thing fine let me quickly go okay so as in our tcads uh, there are ferroelectric materials are not there so we have to 
take a hybrid model kind of thing so some part we have taken from tcat like charges so once you got the charges then uh, after that you can add a series capacitance or uh, in mathematical or mathematical model so that to get a uh, bf ferro voltage because see e is electric field and polarization relationship is there now e is nothing but v upon tf and the tf has been multiplied over here you can easily find out what is ferro voltage so once you got ferro voltage this is kind of thing total voltage is vg then the below part is your mos transistor and you have a ferro capacitor over here so total voltage can be modulated with respect to vmis vmis means uh, it is from mosfet right from tcat and then v ferro means from analytically whatever you got so total voltage can be modulated with respect to this vmis and vf now here we have taken two different dielect uh, two different ferroelectric materials so one is hzo which is uh, zirconium doped hfo2 another one is hso which is silicon doped hfo2 so these two uh, materials are having lot of opportunities uh, just from this literature we found and uh, uh, try to incorporate in device level so some of the um, work in some of the works over here coming to uh, metal ferro metal insulator and semiconductor so what is here metal and ferro then again sandwiched metal then oxide then your semiconductor okay oxide means insulator so this kind of uh, fdsy we tried to incorporate at, uh, the ferro material and uh, uh, both the things are validated with experiment you can uh, see the s curve we are getting a perfect s step here and here this is a metal ferro and metal here titanium nitride and hzo and uh, similarly titanium nitride and this is hso case so two things are perfectly validated and matched with experimental now uh, we have seen how to achieve a uh, steep ss and this work here we just uh, presented over ieee nano and all these things uh, if you increase start increasing ferroelectric thickness then how the subthreshold slope is started uh, going down and down and uh, finally the stabilized point also uh, calculated and uh, uh, but the thing is we should not go towards uh, the hysteresis region okay so to avoid the hysteresis region we should optimize the ferroelectric thickness so that we can get a linear characteristics to get a linear uh, curve or linear idvg whatever is expected only the task is subthreshold slope should be steep okay so this work we just uh, submitted to ted let's see uh, fine uh, i think i have 10 minutes okay organizers can you tell me how much uh, more time i have uh yes sir you are having five minutes sir. okay yes, fine yeah. okay i'll quickly quickly wind it up uh fine so these results i'm not discussing uh NCPET is one of the emerging area if you are um, if you are interested in this area you can take a research topic of NCPET. fine fine now uh yeah this is a thing uh whatever NCPET we are raising um, eco is coming Fine. So we have one FDSY device which is emerging, and uh, uh, from CLAT they have announcement. Uh, this device can be very good for quantum computing. And similarly, NCFET I have Sony YRDS roadmap, uh, which is by 2028 they are uh, predicting NCFET to take over. And uh, nowadays uh, coming to this nano seat, nano ribbon, all these devices having possible impacts uh, to research to do further. And similarly, there are a lot of uh, calls also uh, AIP uh, there is applied physics letter there is one special call which was last year over uh, ferroelectricity in hafnium oxide the topic itself special call is ferroelectricity in hafnium oxide materials and devices so similarly uh, different uh, special calls are coming from IEEE from AIP and uh, uh, this is TSMC uh, 2 nanometer chip uh, to 1 nanometer they are claiming now but not yet uh, marketed now coming to my last topic with two three minutes i'll uh, finish so neuromorphic computing neuromorphic computing means there are if you see how effectively 
you can mimic the brain then uh, that will solve many of our real life problems like uh, uh, many um, image recognition image classification so lot of problems can be solved if you can effectively mimic our uh, brain so uh, how to see the biological neuron if you see the biological neuron there are lot of components i just i have highlighted few of them one is axon one is dendrites synapse then soma which is processing unit which is available over here and dendrites are receiving the signal from uh, previous neuron through this dendrites and uh, synapse is also available uh, here in presynaptic and postsynaptic and the membrane potential so membrane potential here if you see for a biological neuron so this is what uh, one is resting potential so two terms are important one is resting potential another one is membrane potential so uh, and threshold uh, threshold potential so once you get uh, beyond this threshold uh, potential then you can uh, generate a spike suppose we are sensing something so how the neuron is uh, getting the signal so all these things can uh, only possible if you are uh, going beyond the threshold limit like this is one uh, biological uh, example so what we did there are a lot of uh, ne neuron models the one is integrate and fire and the electrical equivalent circuit is there is a capacitor there is a resistor similarly there are fn model mm, there are uh, huskin huxley metal or it is popularly known as ss model and uh, finally lif so if you see these two characteristics or equivalent circuits so one is integrate fire another one is lif neuron so these are quite simple as compared to other uh, because here one diode is there uh, which is again non linear device and this is uh, again lot of ions are there potassium sodium so if you see this if and lif so these are uh, pretty much simple models for a neuron and the only thing is uh, leakiness is uh, not there in case of integrate and fire right integrate and fire leakiness is not there but lirf is taking care of everything we have same rc circuit but we have a threshold and if your signal is going beyond this threshold then you can get a spike or this capacitance can uh, discharge you can get a spike kind of thing so that is why we, we have chosen this lif neuron model uh, for our analysis and we started this lif neuron model equivalent circuit and once this capacitor will charge till the threshold voltage then it will generate a, it will generate a spike so let us quickly go and here some of some of the literature uh, some people has designed leaky integrate fire neuron uh, through charge and discharge dynamics and uh, some has uh, reported in edl uh, to this cmos compatible synfed based lif neuron so with our work whatever we have done we have taken just a synfed over here and uh, uh, which is a pd as why uh, why beginning i have shown we have uh, leakage and integration so two behaviors we need one is leak and one is integrate so you need some floating body the body should be pretty uh, thicker uh, otherwise it is not fully depleted you can say so that we can have some floating body things and some holes can be accumulated over here and these holes can uh, leak towards the source so that is what uh, accumulation or integration and leakage so two behaviors should be important in case of any neuron model right so that is why we started uh, modeling this pd so i finfed and uh, observing as a lif neuron and uh, uh, to fixing this threshold uh, let me again show you this one yeah this is the part whatever i told so some hole should be integrate over here and this should leak towards the source source to give you uh, some spikes right so spikes also we calculated from transient analysis so how single spike how multiple spikes generating and uh, spike frequency as compared to source gate and if you uh, see uh, uh, the benchmarking table so here we have uh, our uh, device which is giving 0.023 area and which is having energy 5.4 femtojoules so it is uh, pretty high as compared to the other neurons other proposed neurons and this work we just submitted to t nano as a special call yeah this is the special call which was there from i triple t nano the deadline was just over 31st uh, december 2021 and uh, similarly other devices are lot of opportunities from ultra wide band gap semiconductors uh, like i told for high power high voltage devices gallium nitride gallium silicon carbide uh, beta gallium oxide you can see the breakdown voltage is having 
very high it's 8 mega uh, breakdown electric field 8 mega volt per centimeter so it is uh, applicable for electrical application and uh, there are a lot of different calls also for a uh, ieee td from ieee td there is a special call ultra wide band gap semiconductor and uh, similarly aip apl and uh, ieee special call this one uh, tcad just uh, last year it was over and uh, this neuron one okay so with this uh, let me just finish conclude my talk why we are talking about so many things on transistors because if you see earlier we have uh, battery system then we started money then slowly we uh, gone to chip or with a card so one card can be sufficient again there are a lot of cards in my purse i cannot hold all card so uh, further one mobile is sufficient smart mobile right and uh, similarly nowadays uh, due to this virtual whatever we are talking we are speaking by sitting in home there is no movement no travel we can do all these things only possible because of the uh, invention of transistor or further improvement or advancement in transistor right so in this let me thanks to all my collaborators and uh, the funding support from uh, dst serve and from my institute so thank you all for listening to me any further suggestions or question i welcome thank you very much sir uh, thank you for your nice presentation and uh, there is a question in the chat box is there any tool to simulate gfet this is raised by dr ajit sahu okay yeah there are uh, tools uh, you can say nano tcad whites is there let me just type over here one free tool is there but you have to install it properly this is freely available there is no uh, cost or no license fee and uh, if you are institute is having uh, money then you can purchase any uh, quantum wise or quantum atk tool uh, from synopsis quantum atk so it depends whether you want uh, free or you want uh, payment whatever yeah any other queries how yeah, to put the right to lower but anything else hope uh, dr rajit sahu has yeah, sir yeah yes hello yeah yeah Yeah, I can hear, <laughs> sir. Uh, uh, my question is actually different from uh, what has been discussed uh, in this slide, but it is related to the uh, uh, one of the beginning slide that you have shown that you are working on different type of devices like NCFET. Mm. So, uh, uh, actually, I am working with uh, junctionless uh, devices. Okay. Okay. So, uh, sir, uh, I want uh, to. Uh, have uh, your words on uh, junctionless devices uh, like uh, what are the different uh, futuristic uh, challenges uh, which must be addressed so that these devices can also address uh, uh, the yeah, jun uh, yes yes junctionless devices emerging again whatever graphene fit i have shown you right that is also kind of junctionless yes. uh, there is no junction one single graphene sheet uh, there is no n type or p type there is no pn junction towards source or there is no pn junction towards yeah. strain it is simple one graphene sheet uh, kind of junctionless and junctionless is uh, emerging you can say because uh, doping is a headache right so if you take different dopings again that is another headache like um, accurately uh, keep the borders of source accurately keep the borders of uh, drain side doping so again junction depth or you can say source side junction depth drain side junction depth that will occupy your effective channel length yes so it is again one more headache no? yes so junction less is it has a future you can work go ahead no problem okay okay thank you yeah so uh, thank you any other queries I think they are all exhausted because last yeah. day last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. So we keeping that in mind.
uh, there is no questions from the audience we thank all the audience for the kind patience and uh, i ext i extremely thankful you to us for for your kind concern towards this session and for your valuable presentation yeah thank you thank you sr university and department of sc for inviting me and having me all the best good luck thank you thank you very much sir uh, and i request audience to join the session by 120 I request audience to join the session by 1:25 p.m. The valedictory function will start. The valedictory function attendance is mandatory. Uh, based on that only we can able to generate certificate bundle. So please help me in this aspect and join back by 1:25 p.m. sharply. Have a have a great lunch. Thank you very much for your kind cooperation so far. Thank you everybody.